So now let's look at how we can use typedef to simplify some of these declarations. So typedef, if you're not really familiar with it, is simply used to create aliases for data types. So it renames data types and it, do it doesn't really create a new data type. It just gives it a different name to make it simpler. A typedef is similar to a macro text replacement, but there are two key differences between macros and typedef in this case. It's just a side point for you guys to learn more, but it's not really required right now for our purposes, so I'll leave that to you to read over, and if you have questions, you could ask in the comments. So we're going to use typedef to simplify the declarations for us. And the way you're going to use read typedef, so when you see typedef in a declaration, you read the declaration exactly as we learned, with one difference, and this is that you will add is a synonym of after the variable name. So once you get to the variable, you'll say the variable is a synonym of, and then you'll continue. So it's a synonym because we're just creating a synonym, a different name. We're not actually creating a new type. So this is the only dif difference between what we've already seen and having a type def in a type, dec in a type declaration. So let's see how we could use it to actually simplify declaration. So let's look at this one. So in this case, this is our variable name. So signal is a function. So we go right, we hit an opening parenthesis. So it's a function returning. Now I'm going to skip everything inside the function. This is the arguments to the function. And you could put that right here if you want. So we'll skip all of that. Returning, we have to go left. So returning a pointer, pointer to, and then we fin we go right. We see that it's a parenthesis. So we have to finish the grouping. What we've already finished it. So we keep on going right. So it's a pointer to a function. This is an opening parenthesis to a function taking an integer as an argument and returning so we're we've reached the end so function returning we've reached the end we go back we consume this final element returning void so signal is a function which takes this complex argument or two arguments returning a pointer to a function returning void and that function right here takes an integer as an argument so this function takes this as argument and this one takes an integer as an argument so this is signal. How can we simplify this? We will try to factor out things that we see in common. Within this argument, you see that we have a function taking integer. So this function right here, this, you could take it as a declaration of its own. And you'll see that func is a pointer, since we hit this, is a pointer to a function which takes integer as an argument and returns void. So this is one of the arguments to the first function, and that function right here we saw at the end is the same thing. It's also a function which takes integer as an argument and returns void. So what are we going to do is we will factor out this part and put in a typedef. So we will typedef a pointer to function. So we'll have a new identifier which, which stands for a pointer to a function. And you could actually just read this just like we learned how to read declarations. So pointer to func. This is our variable name in this case, or identifier, is a synonym. Right? We said we add synonym in this case because it's a type def. It's not actually a new type. It's a synonym for a pointer right because we hit this parentheses this closing parentheses so for uh, so we go back and we consume this pointer pointer to a function function which takes int as its argument returning we've done we're done with the declaration we go back returning void so pointer to function is a synonym for a pointer to a function taking an integer and returning void. So that's why I called it pointer to function to make things easier. Now going back to our original declaration that we were trying to simplify with this type def, we will say the following. So we'll write the following using our new pointer to func type def. So what we're going to say is signal is a function taking this argument, 
So these two arguments, and you see how I use pointer to function right here? Because this is exactly as follows, the same as this one. So it takes these two arguments and returning a pointer to a function. So signal is a function taking these two arguments, returning a pointer to a function, returning void. So this pointer to function, we've used it in two places right here, and we've simplified this declaration from here, what we had right here, to these two. So it makes things clearer and simpler to read. So when it comes to creating your own type defs, you will basically assume that you're creating a type declaration. So forget about the fact that you're creating a type def. And then in the end, all you have to do is add the keyword type def to the start. And then that name that you, choose, you chose for your variable will become your new alias. So that will become a synonym to whatever you have defined as a type declaration. So this is how you create type defs to simplify your C type declarations. Now one final point we need to look at are abstract declarators. Sometimes we will need a type to be described, but not associated with a variable name. So we won't have an identifier associated with it. And this is for two purposes, either for casting purposes or to act as arguments for size of. So this is an example. You see there are no identifiers, there is no variable name, and it could be challenging to actually try to understand this. So how do you go about understanding this? Well, you treat it just like we treated a normal declaration, but the first thing you have to do is try to find where would a variable name go inside this declaration, and there's only one place where it would go. So you work backwards from the precedence rules we looked at. So the variable name will have to be to the right of all the pointers, to the left of all the arrays of, so you look for these elements, and to the left of all the function returning, and inside all the grouping parentheses. So these are the hints that you use to find out where your variable goes, and then from there you could start reading it. So in this case, if we look at this, we have to be to the right of all the, the, uh, the, the pointers, we have to be to the left of the function, so you see this is a function, this is a function, so we have to be somewhere here or here, right? But since we also said that we have to be inside all the grouping parentheses, this is a grouping parentheses, right? So it has to be inside this one, which is also inside that one. So you see that the place of a variable goes right here if you follow these four rules. So take a moment to actually try to understand this. It's not really complicated, it's just working backwards from what we had seen earlier. So now we just put any variable name there and attempt to read it, and then you will understand what this abstract declarator stu stood for. So in this case it'll be foo is a, since we hit this parentheses we have to go back, is a pointer to a function returning a pointer to, so I'm done all of this right here, a function returning, I'm done with this one, and then finally the basic type returning an int. So this is what I have here in this video. Hopefully this makes it easier for you to read type declarations in C. And it's also worth noting at the end that although we could, using these syntax rules that we just learned, we could actually build all sorts of uh, type declarations. Not all of them are actually correct.